Welcome to Steph Reacts. We are going to react to another episode of the CP's podcast. And this is going to be an awesome one. But before we get into that, did you know your daily facts of the day? Your daily facts of the day reads, It takes a drop of water. 90 days to travel the entire Mississippi River. I didn't know that, but now you do. Let's go. What up, y'all? This is Comedian CP. This is the CP Podcast. I'm CP on the CP Podcast. It's the podcast where CP does a podcast about being CP having a podcast. <laughs> My name is CP, and this is the podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, CP, of the podcast. It's a podcast where I'm hosting it. It's about me, CP. Uh, but I didn't come alone. Because how could I phone home if I was alone without a bone? No, no, no. I brought the ever so beautiful, talented, and intelligent Maya. I brought, I brought the do-rag assassin, <laughs> Amir. And we got Cam in the building. Because... Why not have Cam in a bit? Cam, your hair looks amazing. You. you like a very young, tender Jesus. <laughs> like, like you know, like when Jesus was like 17. <laughs> and they was like, you know who's a good boy? That Jesus. I just like his aura. And you know what I'm saying? He's just like out there just shooting baskets like Forrest Gump. Just like very head up. And then as the balls go in and he put his hands on his hip. Be like, that's a shot. And they're like, we like Jesus. Anyway, she's like a small Jesus. Right before he lost his virginity, Jesus. Like Jesus with an old school Lincoln. Go to the store, get a milk and a bread for his family. They be like, hey, Jesus, how's Mary? Good. How's your father? Still a little stressed out there, confused about who my father really <laughs> is. But he's okay. He's making it. All right. Well, tell everybody, say, hey. All right, cool. They argue a lot. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine just being Jesus just in the middle of the night. So why the fuck is his hair so long then? <laughs> he doesn't like girls, Mary. That's not the point, Joseph. <laughs> that is not the point, Joseph. He like Mary Magdalene. I'm convinced that's his wife. You think Mary Magdalene is Jesus' wife? I think so. Yeah. Why yeah, wouldn't and, uh, she be his wife? Somebody, somebody will catch Jesus slipping and suck that dick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, like, uh, uh, ladies, come on now. As soon as they find out you touch, when you touch people, you heal them. You think there's a woman gonna be like, "Excuse me, I'm gonna need to go ahead and suck that dick, Jesus," because I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man, come on, man, please. Flavor Flav was 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 was, was kissing delicious in the mouth. Come on, man. Somebody had to suck Jesus' dick. And I'm not I'm not even trying to be that guy who's who's not going, you know. But, you know, I, I'm pretty sure he got offers at least. Mm -hmm. Jesus' DMs is off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> just be a bunch of letters outside his door. Jesus, you got all these goddamn DMs. Sweep up. I'm sorry, mother. I'm sorry, mother. Joseph, like, are any, are any of those DMs for me? <laughs> no, they're not, Joseph, because no one respects me. Everyone knows that, that this child is not of my loins. Joseph, stop it right now. His hair is so long. I had many holes when I was 17. This boy has none. All right, I'm done. That was, that was a play, though. Shakespeare is coming out. I'm coming out with it on Broadway. It's called Sweet Teen Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Why someone doesn't buy that right now? Say what? Why someone doesn't buy that right now? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know why. They don't want to hear it because it's really good. He's mm -hmm. such a benevolent. He's like benevolent like Goku. But, oh, when he fights evil, oh, that needs to be a sweet ass. He's a man. He's sweet as hell. Matrix fighting evil. You know what I heard yesterday? What? I was listening to it. I was full in laundry. Is that they think Jesus may have been a magician. Mm. Yeah, because they say, okay, so Christians very firmly outlawed the use of magic. Yeah. Why would you do that if they weren't practicing magic left and right? Which, looking back, we know that they were. 
the early, early Christian Christian sects were practicing magic left and right. But where, what, I mean, what do you mean, though? What, was it like card magic or like, because they were turning like... I would think it would probably have to be something with dark magic. Because with the stories with Moses and all of that, when Moses turned this um, staff into a snake, I think there were some people in the palace with, in Egypt that did the same thing, but only thing, um, I think that was dark magic. Sorry guys, I know this is a topic that many of you probably don't know, but CP brought it up and it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. If I'm if I'm correct. Stabs into snakes. Ooh. Oh, not like real stuff. Oh. Ooh. I didn't realize CP was about to say the same thing. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so I went down on a rabbit hole before and I ordered this book called Ancient Christian Coptic Magic. So this was in Egypt and around the second, third century. Mm -hmm. So the Christians were known to be powerful magicians. Mm. So I was like, I need to get this book. To see. It was about Christian spells. I should have brought it with me. And I'm like, this is going to have like the knowledge. I'm going to learn something. It's going to be special. Christian spells? God, I believe. This was so disappointing. Like the spells were about love, how to get money, how to chase off rats. That's lit. What? What? Chase who, off rats? Who, who doesn't want to be rich in love and rat free? <laughs> what, what, what are you trying to learn? Why is like I want to know how to rule people. Like second century, no yeah. You know they were important back then, but like for me to be like I got to get this book. I mean, spent thirty dollars on this nah. book. Like I don't need any that's of that how, stuff. That's that's how I felt when I found out that God Lee wasn't the Asian karate guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And God Dang wasn't the Indian guy. <laughs> You thought it was like a, a kickboxing movie or something? I don't know. I just feel you like, golly. I'm like, whoa, come on. Why, why bring the Asians God into this? You know what I'm saying? Because his last name was Lee, like Bruce Lee, like God Lee. But everybody had a God, like God dang, like Denga, dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like Indian people, they had their God, like God dang, God dang. And then God Lee. I was like eight. I was just putting shit together. And I thought that's how it went. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, like Bruce Lee was like their Jesus. Because he's a direct descendant of Godly, who is, you know what I'm saying, you know, Godly. But, you know, apparently it's someone else who we just reference all the time. You should make that a show. About Godly? Like like Power Rangers, except with the different gods from the different places. Mm. And they come together and they fight uh, Yeah, but crime. you can't let nobody get their ass whooped. Everybody's going to be like, well, why did our God get his ass whooped? <laughs> why our God? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. You feel me? It's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, so, no. Nah, I don't know. I can't do that. I wish I could, though. I also wish I could make a movie where Superman was black, but... Why can't you do that? Well, because I'm, I am don't want to make stuff black. Like, stuff should be what it is. If it's black, it's black. But I don't want to make black stuff white. We should just leave that what it is, too. They got a black Barbie. It's not even fair. Just make another character. Like, black Barbie is like Barbie in blackface. Wasn't that Christina? Wasn't Christina Black Barbie? Yeah, but there's also just a regular Black Barbie, which is just dark skin Barbie, which is like Barbie and blackface. It's not like they don't even name or nothing else. It's just a Black Barbie. You think about that? Just Black Barbie? Yeah, or just a Black see. Barbie. You know, it's like, come on, we, we got to stop doing that to the kids. Next thing you know, they gonna have a White Panther, and it'd be the whole Marvel series White Panther. He'd be flying around, talk about Wisconsin forever. <laughs> Wisconsin forever. Wait, is this is this what you're talking about? This Black Barbie? Probably. I mean, she's beautiful, but she, I mean, she out cold, thick ass. You said curvy on there. Yeah, oh, right. Ain't that? She looked like a modern Janet Jackson back in the day with the puffs. She looks good. That bitch curvy, curvy brunette. That ain't no goddamn brunette. That's regular black people here. We ain't no damn brunette. Are, are, are we brunettes? I mean, technically, if you hold the hair up to the light, it's brown. It's dark it's like brown. brown. Sometimes I mean, of course, black, but oh, but... damn! So it's, I mean, okay, I never heard of nobody. But anyway, like we we, we yeah. identify people as brunette, not. So I mean, this is not Barbie. Her name should not be Barbie. Her name should be something else because it's like, duh, like you know, that's you know, it's just I don't know. Because there used to be. So what 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 if they came out with with some black Ninja Turtles and they called them the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> <laughs> Was it Stacy? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
<laughs> anyway, I used to play with a black Barbie doll, but it wasn't called Barbie. She was, uh... She got a homegirl named Christina that they came out with, but Christina long and goofy. Don't nobody want no damn Christina guy. She, no, that's... Wait, it was Christina, the little sister. She got a little sister. I think her little sister is Kelly. Yeah. How do you know all this? Like the teenage version of... Yeah, Skipper, like one of their homegirls from down the street. She like Kimmy Gibbler in that little world. Oh, it's Christy. Christy, ugh. She the like, uh... Oh, yeah, this is old for sure. Old style yeah, for sure. Jesus she Christ. definitely got the uh, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. She like, my mama said I need to be home by the time the milkman come on so I can come in and, and be, take my daddy to work. This has to be the 60s. Probably. I, I could be friends with her. She, you would? I would be friends with her. Look, she's about her business. She don't look like she don't do nothing but do the twist. <laughs> <laughs> do the twist. She be like, yeah, so we was down there twisting. It was a good little party. <laughs> twisting was twerking back then. <laughs> These young hussies, they don't do nothing but the twist. That's all they do is the twist. They ain't get no jobs or nothing. They out here twisting. <laughs> twisting ass the hoes. I'm sick of it. No daughter of mine. It's in these streets twisting. Period. Sure. But daddy, I'm real. I don't give a fuck if you're a good twister. Look at the forehead on Chrissy right there. Come on, fam. They were just making all kind of Yolandas. You know what I'm saying? Like Beverly's. That, th those are Beverly's. Yeah. I can remember when they, came, when they first came out, remember the baby alive doll that could talk and speak? I think they came out with a, with a dark one, and I don't think it did pretty well, in my opinion. Um, let me know if they did came, come out with one, if they did back in the day, because I cannot remember. I think my cousin had one. I'm not sure, though. Yeah. Those, look, at, look at the little lit. Oh, Jesus Christ. They just didn't care. Because she had uh, Barbie's measurements, and Barbie had very little hips. Oh, God. She don't look right with them little hips. Anytime a black woman's shoulder's not supposed to be wider than her hips unless she do gymnastics. That's it. You know what I'm Unless you Simone Biles. Well, shout out to Simone Biles. She's very beautiful. But she could have, she could have that little look. But other than that, nobody wants to see that. Nobody want no damn uh, Kung Fu grip chick. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was, huh, get your ass over here. Stop grabbing me like that. Huh. Those cats will fast. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, nothing. Uh, she like she on cocaine, too. And one of them pictures right here, I got strung out. Uh, no, and I, uh, for, of course, that one. What happened yeah. to her nose? Man, everybody knows somebody with a light-skinned grandma that got pictures in their house with them looking just like this. <laughs> it was, you know what? It was the fifth. Oh, and everybody was doing. Yeah. I had a Chevrolet. Stock, stockings yeah. on the heels, yep. <laughs> I see. Everybody. It. I dated a lot because it wasn't just your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> it was not just your grandfather. No, no, no. No, I could be friends with her. Definitely be friends with her. Why you want to be friends with all these old ass uh, Motown Barbies? <laughs> old people are funny. Oh, my next door neighbor. My next door neighbor is in her late eighties now, but we talk about stuff. And so she was in L.A. around that time, nineteen sixty-two. Uh, she was around in L.A. in like nineteen sixty-two. So she's Italian. She came over from the war, et cetera, et cetera. She was a model back then. And the models used to go into the restaurants dressed in the clothes. And the guys would, you know, they're with their dates, with their wives or whatever. He'd be like, oh, you like that outfit? I'll get you that outfit. Okay. So bad. they have stories. You're talking to some old people wait that have minute. stories. Wait, wait, My head, that was, that, that was the most, that was like a roller coaster to get to the top. Be like, <laughs> psych, safe landing. Like, that, that's, that, they were so, they thought they were being so cutting edge. You know what they, was, they used to do? They used to wear the clothes, and people would see them in the clothes, and then go and buy them. We do that now! But they came in and be like, it was the show. It was like, okay, now we have the fashion show when you have dinner. That's what that, that's called not having a phone, <laughs> and just looking around the restaurant like, ooh, look, 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 man, please. That is, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm happy that I'm born when I'm born, so that I could get a taste of that, but then get a taste of this. And this is better, because that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Shout out to these Beverly Dolls. Shout out to these uh, Cream of Wheat Barbies. 
Bless their heart. They made me with some fried green tomatoes for some reason. Oh, but then look Barbie. at these, look at these Kardashian, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow as Barbies. So like, yeah, and this is this is this is how girls learn how to be. They get a Barbie, and if and if you a Barbie, it probably still is. But a Barbie back in the day, I can remember was so expensive to get your hands on one one of those Barbie sets. I remember my cousin was so tripped over Bobby, like, oh my goodness. I wonder if kids today are into Barbies now. Are they? A kid, Barbie is always butt ass naked. Sorry to tell you, you have a stripper. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> so, nah, real talk. My kids' Barbies be butt ass naked everywhere. They just be the naked ass Barbie, just somewhere, just stretched out. I'd be like, what happened to her? She's a doctor. I you just, have a doctor. No, nah, I just imagine like when we're all asleep, like a Ninja Turtle or something. Just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> how we all began? That's enough, Michelangelo. Shut up! I'll tell you when it's enough. <laughs> Toy Story <laughs> Six. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking Toy Story the whole time. Toy Story Six, <laughs> the pain. Now, so, that would be that would be interesting if if your um Barbie dolls were coming alive. Oh my goodness, that's what makes to Toy Story such a unique story because it made people have like this imagination. You know, that's what made dolls so popular because of Toy Story and the Andy story and what's not. I must say that um, Toy Story, the flying guys, when it first came out, it it was fun. It was like one of the best. Is it Disney? Well, it was one of the best cartoons that came out, and they should do it. They should come up with with another one. They should just do it for the culture. Come up with another one, with probably Andy have a kid or something. Uh, you know, something like that. But um, it should be good. What happened, Barbie? Just talk to us. <laughs> it's not funny, Cam. <laughs> Imagine like that, like Barbie being in a Toy Story movie, though. Like actually, then be like, yeah. you take all they, their they clothes off. We'll say like, you, you know how they always end up taking their clothes off, like oh, how yeah. you're saying, and then it's like the parents come in and the, the doll has just a, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, play dead. Everybody play dead. Everybody <laughs> play dead. She, Bar she in there naked. They're like, what? Barbie, what's going on? <laughs> Michael <Michelangelo> Angelo's <laughs> dead. I mean, he, he laying on the ground. His dick still hard. And I know it's a dick on these turtles. And he's <laughs> 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 That's fucking crazy. Um, we're going to get canceled so quick. But, you know, it was, we, we had a good run, did we, guys? We had a good room. Shout out to Barbie, man. You know, shout out to Mattel and all the toys, man. You know, they just because they they they're helping to shape the children. You know what I'm saying? All of the all of the kids who uh, got them tracks where the cars be crashing, they're drunk drivers now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's just it's just crazy when you know you look at the toys. The kids who's playing with that science stuff, you know, like the little science stuff, like the like the um the uh, make your own crystals and stuff. Make your own crystals and. Um, doing like the microscope and all of that, mm -hmm. looking through the microscope at the slides and stuff. All those kids are cooking meth, crack, um, like selling and growing weed. Um, Legitimate business now. Yeah, some of the best people around, especially meth heads. You go to a <laughs> restaurant and it'd be like a meth head who just, you know, teeth and ass is gone. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what it is about meth. Teeth and ass be gone. You know what I'm saying? But they, but they so welcoming as like a waitress. Like, meth is the perfect drug for like a waitress at a diner that doesn't get a lot of customers just out on the desert. Man, how's it going? What you guys, what you guys having? What you guys having? Oh, man. That, that reminds me of a Family Guy episode. I just imagining them doing something like that. Family Guy or, or what's the other one? American Dad, you know? And Oh no. What are we doing? Flapjacks or what? We're doing flapjacks? We're doing flam our specials are hash and eggs. We've got hash and eggs. It's really good. Our, our our chef does a great hash and eggs. Yeah, I'm gonna be out back smoking a rock. You guys need me anything? 
Grab an orange juice or something. No problem. No problem, sugar. Oh, uh... You want some pie? <laughs> you want some pie? It just makes me sad watching these women go from, like, beautiful... Here's one. Well, it yeah. always tell you just, well, you know, I look bad now, but I was really bad when I was on that shit. And, uh, you, you know, your cheeks get sucked in first, then it's your shoulders, then it's your breast. The 33 to 34 is the biggest drop, I think, in this one. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a great year. Wow. Obama was in office. Meth was a lot easier to get back then because everyone was working. You know, people were steady moving it, and uh, it got really good. It was like Kush around that time. Fucking premium shit. It was really good. And, uh, yeah, I went a little overboard. You know, my cheeks. Uh, R.I.P. She died. Oh, she died? Oh, it says she died at 30. You gotta tell me that, Maya. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She died, oh. so. But, oh, yeah, I see that bomb died at age 38. Rest in peace to that woman. Rest in peace. Well, it ain't my fault. They put her up here at, on this little barber chart of. <laughs> <laughs> when this little barber chart of meth users is like, what am I supposed to do? I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they do scary straights. Yeah, it's all fun and games now till you're on 34. Look at right here on 34. It's all fun and games now. Yeah, it's all fun and games. It's a party here. It's a wake up, meth snack, breakfast. Yeah, it's fun now. <laughs> then your boyfriend leaves. <laughs> your boyfriend leaves you. All right, man. So UFOs, huh? How do we get here? <laughs> how do we get here, man? Like I really don't know. How do we get here, man? Kids, don't do drugs. The views and that was the topic of discussion from the last CP podcast episode. That um, many believe that aliens and UFOs are real and stuff like that. Wonderful topic, though. If you want to check it out, I should have that. It's already on the page, so you can just check it out and everything. But it's something. It's something that has been talked about for many years, and everything else. But um, many believe that it's a host. Many still believe that different things are real, even though the government may have something to do with it. We don't know, but um, we will see. But uh, do you believe, the question is, do you believe in UFOs and probably aliens and mermaids and stuff like that? Let me know in the comments below. Moment, mine, you know, don't come after my Amir. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're innocent bystanders. Cam can take it. Come after Cam. His hair is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? You know, he'll, he'll get off. Me, on the other hand, if you need to come at me, you know, I, this is this is all on me. I didn't know that that chart that looks like eight different women. But I like age thirty five. That's 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 the kind of crackheads used to be in my neighborhood, and they was all cool. Don't even go in there. They're charging eight bucks for a pack of backwoods. Why are her cheeks? I mean, she must have no fat on her. Like, none. don't even. I'm telling you, the feds were here earlier asking questions about who's selling meth in the neighborhood. I told them I had no idea, and they were like, "Fine." But I'm telling you right now, do not go in there. And they're overcharging for their backwoods, and sometimes their backwoods are stale. You got five bucks. <laughs> you got five bucks. Come on, man. You got five bucks. You got five bucks. Oh my <laughs> She does look okay at 32. You can tell he's telling the truth because he, he has the mannerisms of a, a meth woman. Because if you are not experiencing it for yourself, you cannot act out the way CP is acting out. It's, it sounds so authentic, you know. So he's telling the truth. Though. I just want to say that at 32, she should have stopped at 32 because she could have kept that going. She could have had a bad at few At 32, years. she looked like a skunk or something in the face. What she looked like? She looked like she looked like she like a pit. She said, "Look at look at her eyes. Look real little. They had no eyebrows. Well, oh, yeah, she, she sold them bitches. 
<laughs> she sold the bitches on the first the first weeks. Oh, really? Eyebrows? Give me eight bucks. Perm brow. Don't do me dirty. Sixteen bucks. Come on. <laughs> yeah, them bitches gone. Another meth head put them on and went to her daughter graduation. Mom, you got your eyebrows back? Well, these are these these, these are temporaries, but I'm telling you, I'm cleaning my whole act up. <laughs> oh my God. I got a job at the diner. All right, I quit, man. I don't know what's wrong with me, guys. Okay, I'll give you the option of stories that I've prepared. Yes. Okay. Because I want to play a game at the end. Oh, okay. Look, I want to. I want to create a game too. We, we probably can't do it this time, okay. but I want to start doing voiceovers for videos. Okay. Just like we put a video, it could be a random video, whatever. And I want to do like a voiceover for the video, and then whatever the video is, just be funny. Like just like I just made up that whole thing about the lady, and I know she's she's dead. Um, you know, R.I.P. to this lady. Let's close that out. That's yeah, sad. let's close let's that out for real. Now I'm thinking Barbie. about how many Paul Bearers she had. You know what I'm saying? It's like, would you just put six people on that casket just to be like for show, or would you just go ahead and throw two people up there and be like? <laughs> 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 it's her dad and her uncle like come on man let's get this shit you know what I'm saying alright <laughs> oh man don't do meth though that's what we learned don't yeah, do the meth real. that's and if and if you do don't show it to a comedian <laughs> you did that to yourself wow. she was a method actor <laughs> 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 I'm really getting into the role Okay, so, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was, I was going to say sorry. some stuff. The story is a UFO hearing at the Pentagon or the end of the world. Or we could try to get both in. Let's try to get both in. Let's do this UFO hearing at the Pentagon because I feel like we've been trying to discuss this for a couple of weeks. Okay. Oh, man. So last week, and the fact that uh, the fact that it was last week and it's not ongoing makes me think that this was just like a show hearing. Last week, they had... People from the Pentagon, the House called in people from the Pentagon to talk about uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon, which is what they call UFOs now. Mm. I like UFOs a little better, but UAPs, I can get that. I can get with that. People are going to be like, how the fuck is it? Is it phenomena? Phenomena start with an F. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just good. A lot of people are going to say that at first. Phenomena, man. Phenomena, F E. Uh, yummy, yummy. <laughs> uh, so what's up with this, man? What are they talking about, My Explain it to us. So they're saying that they have 400 incidents that they can't really, they can't pinpoint. Um, and it says that at least 80 of, oh, it says 144? Okay, so it started with 144. At least 80 they cannot pinpoint. It has grown to 400 since last year's report which seems to mean that the frequency is is getting more. It's getting they're getting more frequent. And so that's what they said. They called them in and they said, "Okay, so we have these 400 reports now. We don't know what they are. Is this a threat?" All right. So imagine calling a big ass meeting to tell motherfuckers you don't know. <laughs> we are we have called you all here to be like, "Mm." -hmm. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Are there any questions? Oh, yes, you right. Man. That's all like um, a job that I used to go to. Man, we had so many meetings, 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 meetings that really didn't have had any impact on us. Like that could have been said via an email or something. Oh my goodness, wasting time. That's what I called it. You know. So what are you guys gonna do? Mm -hmm. Next question. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> Anybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are phenomenal. We do know that they are phenomenal and they're unexplained in their area. That's correct. They are phenomenally aerial and unexplained. Well, the the house called in the Pentagon to ask the Pentagon what it knows. The Pentagon says they don't have evidence that it's otherworldly but they don't have evidence that it's necessarily i'm gonna tell not. you what i respect about this this is this is the government saying look we don't know what it is which i think is cap and bullshit but whatever i also think that we might put a little bit too much um 
respect on the government's name to even think that our aliens would even be contacting these dumb motherfuckers anyway. But you never know. You know what I'm saying? Bunch, you know, these old ass turkey neck chin niggas are, well, we went up there and talked to the aliens and basically they said the gas prices, you know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Come on. It's like, so who knows, man? Like, um, they, they, they might really not know, you know I what I'm saying? They... And I think that it's, it's more embarrassing to be a government and not know about these phenomena and not really have contact than it is, you know? So I, I think that, uh, a, a, a a lot of this over the years has been them trying to figure out what the fuck is going on and them not knowing, but them having to act like they kind of knew something a little bit just to kind of save face. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, I think that, I mean, we're just putting a little bit too much respect on them to think that they, we we know the secrets, so we're not telling you. It's like, man, first of all, no, I don't think you do. Because if you knew how to communicate with them, then you would first things first have them in on the the secret of it like hey mm -hmm. we're not telling people so please fly over these areas because we don't have any you know what i'm saying if you could communicate with them yeah. and you're not going to tell us that you would at least be like hey so it's like that right there's always been a red flag for me like why do the aliens apparently seem to not understand the agenda that's at hand when it comes to being a secret yeah what was that one over mexico city that they do you remember the, the sighting over Mexico City? Yes. I think I heard about that one. I heard about it. Yes, I do. I, I don't um but Mexico City's had a lot of crazy shit. Look up like like they have like uh they've seen like fallen angels on on camera in Mexico City. Like it's all kind of uh -huh. when it's stuff like that, I honestly don't really believe it because because of the town we are living in. We are so advanced with um, green screens and editing stuff. Like, I wouldn't, like, something like an angel falling or whatever. I feel that still the whole world would be able to see it or notice something where it is happening. Why is it just one place like Mexico? You know, that's just my opinion. I don't think it's real. I want to go down there and just take a, have a tank top on. So that's... But, I mean, the video is the video. So Cam's out that? here hating, so that's guys. Just, oh, that's just that, that little dot? Because everybody, everybody stopped to see it. So that, that was the one of the sightings. You said there was an angel? Yeah, look up Fallen Angels, Mexico. This might be like a YouTube thing. You know how they do. Fallen Angels, Mexico City. It'd be all kind of shit. I think that the frequency in America, for some reason, things just, I don't know, if it's not quiet enough here for us to really be able to notice, like the lights and all of that stuff that's coming out of America, we're not really able to, you know, to really see any inconsistencies in the sky. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like you would be out in more of a rural wilderness style country you know what i'm saying that kind of just is a little bit more in tune with their ancestry and spiritual stuff and all of that it's like i do think that um all right <clears throat> put it like this while you look mm -hmm. for that put it like this theoretically if we are seeing beings and creatures in um vessels mm -hmm. in our um in our realm or our uh, dimension, then that means that those beings, those vessels, those vehicles, whatever, would be of this dimension, right? They Theoretically, have to adhere to the rules. right? While they're here, right? Or at least so, if there them. are other dimensions that are that are kind of at play at the same time as this dimension, then those dimensions in themselves could have beings and visitors and all of that in them as well. Mm -hmm. And so if we're not able to tune in to a different frequency, like, for example, they just turned back on the collider. The Large Hadron Collider. Yeah. Yeah. They just turned it back on. And that was like one of the biggest issues that they turned it back on back in 2012. And they felt like um, we were living in like a, a, a collided reality. A lot of things started happening that just threw off the smoothness of our reality. You know, and when you think about it, like, man, we have had some crazy shit happen over the last 20 years or so, that's like, well, what the fuck has been going on? 
Yeah. Well, that, that I think we can explain through the internet coming out. Because that's yes. like, Cameron's over there. People can't see Cameron, you but... Can't see or hear me, so don't, don't talk. Okay, so because the internet is like the printing press. And when that came out, everyone lost their mind. Like all over Europe, there were these people just reading the Bible and they're like, no, God's talking to me. God wants me to be this messi- Messiah character. And so all these cults came out and they were super violent because the culture that they came out was very violent. So what we're seeing now is kind of similar to what they saw when they first got the printing press. And it was, it was a mess. I don't want to go into, I don't want to scare anybody and be like, yo, this is going to happen to us. But it got very, very, very messy. What are you, but what are you drawing that parallel to? Like the printing press as it pertains to the internet, the internet and social media. The internet has been out so long. I feel like it's not, it's not new. I think that what you're seeing is, this is the second wave of the information age like you know we're seeing the residual effect right like i feel like our parents were kind of at the very end of that industrial age where things were getting built and shipped and all of this stuff and now information is being exchanged so fast that that's become the new uh, i don't even want to call it a currency it's almost like the new uh the new food like we're consuming it so fast so much information and now our our opinions are growing because people are putting two and two together where two and two never were well that's what that's what happened it um with the printing press is that they that. they yeah. d- the priest said only we can interpret the bible and then they got the printing press they translated the bible into not into latin so into german english or whatever and then people were like now i can use this information and i can interpret this information on my own right okay that's what you're saying and now we have right now when you look at the landscape of like mind wars that we're fighting like we're fighting people who are confused we're also fighting purposely bad actors like there are russian agents chinese agents who just want to cleave open the divide between Americans because they can already see the divide is there. They'll just come and they'll just add to it. And why shouldn't they? Because we, you know, we're messing with them. Why shouldn't they mess with us? That's just the game. And so we're, we're kind of in no man's land. We kind of can look back on the printing press. We kind of can look back on the radio. But like, really, it's we have no idea what the next few years are going to bring. It's just every man for himself, kind of in in the mental sphere. The internet but, sphere. I mean, but I think that, you know, as sc- That's why I believe that so many um, rich individuals are controlling or uh, deciding to own radios and stuff like that because they get to decide what they can feed the people. Because if you look at it, if they want to, they could feed us fair and stuff like that. And we as people, we tend to run with so um with anything that seems to be chaotic and we tend to go with it. So I do believe that we have to be mindful that not everything that is being shared with us online is actually accurate. So it's always a, an agenda that is being made, you know. Theory as that sounds, it's also very enlightening to know that we as humans are getting a lot more mentally capable. And that's a very scary thing at times, right? Because things become scary, right? When guns first came out, they came out with uh, with the understanding that I can have what I want because I have this gun. Mm-hmm. And then rules had to be set in place. But the guns never got taken away. We still are more powerful as beings because we can shoot stuff. Right? Yeah, I mean, as opposed to cavemen who had to get right up on stuff and kill it. Yeah. Um. It 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 that thought process that those inventions increased our safety, increased our convenience. Um. There's food all over the grocery stores now because we've been able to take over and rule, you know. And that's really boiled down to us having guns and that, you know kind of everything bending to our will. This new space that we're in is going to create these new um threats right but then as that calms down it's going to be a new um a new pleasure Mm -hmm. right there's going to be a new you know we're going to rethink the way that we eat which we're already doing that right now you know we're coming up scientifically with different ways based on information that we're sharing across the world variables where you know we're seeing what people are eating on different continents how long they're living we're tracking them and we're understanding you know how you know so like that information is making i've noticed that persons do it who tend not to eat meat and stick to food that comes from the ground 
they tend to live longer than us because we eat we eat things that are genetically modified and with that being said we don't know what they are injecting in these animals to make them even grow quick and have muscles and things like that so we can assume that and in the long run that gets, uh, that gets us sick and we we tend to have weakened Im immune systems that's why so many of us have high blood pressure diabetes things like that so we have to be mindful that the things that we are eating and stuff like that you know in the world better in different ways but people are living longer which means that their carbon print is here longer which means that the world has to you know has to adjust, adjust. to having that many alive people you know what i'm saying like it's it's, it's kind of we're going to have to develop eventually a super world which is why you know i know we talked about it last week but why those big holes that they found in china um was so important because it shows a livable space even beneath us mm -hmm. on a scale that I think we needed to understand. I like, think there's a forest down there. There could easily be a city. Yeah, we could build. We can do almost anything we want to do. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Um, there's this concept called the Black Iron Prison, and it's how uh, this guy who wrote Minority Report, this guy called Philip K. Dick, who wrote Minority Report, he did, um, oh, man, I blank again. But he was a sci-fi teacher, and he had this idea called the Black Iron Prison. And the Black Iron Prison is supposed to be the mental world in which we live, which extends all the way back from Rome, as he saw it, all the way to Southern California. So he's like, we're all living in this Black Iron Prison. And I'm, I'm editing a video right now. I'm like, I call it a Black Iron Palace, because I very much like our culture. And as long as, you, as long as you're not trapped by it, if you're living in it, and you're like, I want to go to this room. No, I want to go to this room. No, I want to do this. You don't let anyone say... You can't go to that room because don't listen to them. Right. Then it's a palace. Some people think it's a prison. I think that Ooh. it's all about the mindset and how you perceive things to be. You cannot be trapped and only look at one thing one way. Like you may look at a, a place. I may look at a place like um, California, and I, I might see a beautiful place to vacation. But someone who actually grew up in California, they they may get tired of it, and they may not have the same view like I may have. Uh, the same could be said with me. You guys may seem may think that oh, the Bahamas is such a beautiful place, which it is, and the weather is so warm and everything. That would be a wonderful place to vacation, which it is. But for a person that grew up in the Bahamas, yeah, I like it, but I want to see different things as well. So I do agree with Maya. The idea that we never come out of it is the prison. Hmm. You understand? Like, we never escape our mind. Like, we try our best to have these vacations, and we try our best to turn off our mind. And you go to sleep, and then you dream. Because your mind is, is, is like this, it's a computer that we're only using such a small percentage of. And I think that that needs to be reevaluated because of what we're doing now. Like last night I was, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in my script that I'm writing. Then I'm taking a break and I'm jumping on Madden. Then I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima. Then I'm playing um, Call of Duty. And it's like all these different understandings and worlds and i mean you know goes to see my man like rural china fighting mongols then i'm you know on madden you know what i'm saying it's just like you know how fast we're jumping like my playstation 5 is all digital mm -hmm. so i don't even have to take games out my games are never getting scratched like we don't take into account how fast we're moving along because everything is so convenient to us it has nothing's really been jolting Right. I was talking to Pat last night about how um, we have phones, but we used to have to carry a digital camera. We used to have to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, calculators didn't realize that they were being pushed out of to extinction 
when the phone came out. Nobody thought about that, but it's like, you don't need a calculator anymore. A Texas mm -hmm. Instrument, I could download a Texas Instrument right to my phone. Um, we're getting faster. I could change games, bam, bam, no scratch, no blowing the disc, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, remember, they had to blow a cartridge, and I mean, like, you know, yeah, with like alcohol and like a Q tip going over it. It's just like we are getting better and better and better and better. But that, as our mental capacity increases, so does our threat to hurt ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's like, um, it's just we're getting taller, and the taller you are, if you fall, the more you can hurt yourself. That's like with cast there. Yeah. Exactly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so, you know, it's just kind of like um, I'm enjoying the climb, but I understand the... The thing is, even with the games so oh, bad back in the day, if your game was scratch, all you had to do was grab some alcohol, some rubbing alcohol, wipe that down, or if you go further back, all you have to do is blow inside the cartridge, and you're good to go. Kids that they don't know nothing about that. The risk of us becoming this super intelligent society. Actually, that brings us to our next point. Real quick, I'll throw I'll throw this video. It's what I could find. Is this what you saw? Or is this? Nah, I don't believe that. No. So that's in Michigan. That's all I could find because there, there's a band called. Uh... All right, that. So this is just a video. No, this is like literally like fallen angels that like fall from the sky, like like crash like a movie. That was probably a movie. No, 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 no. I mean, well, because there's a, there's a band called Fallen Angels. No, this was like. Let me see if I can look it up. These are like fallen angels. You know, there's also, you know, what else I want to look into? Uh, little stuff like the existence of real fairies. You never, ever even think, right? They found tiny, tiny, tiny little humanoid skeletons. Uh, Florenciensis. Homo Florenciensis. Is that what you're talking about? I'm not sure. That sounds like some shit. Like, they sound like a little pixie dust. Florenciensis. The, the little, little, little... Little guy. No, I'm talking about little, 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 like three, three feet six inches. No, 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 not no three feet. I'm talking about like three inches. Three inches. Like fairies, like real fairies, and they're so small that we're not even looking for them. They be and they're human, humanoid. Humanoid. Yeah, humanoid. Yeah. Type in like the existence, like do fairies exist or something like that, and like there's like real like um. Um, the Florenzi, these little motherfuckers, not them. Shout out to them though. They but just this was this was this was what could have been some of those myths were based on because we did used to no. live with other humanoid creatures. Right, but these that that's more like a dwarf style. Like that's like a tiny, tiny. No, I'm talking about like it's like a little. It's like a little human. Right, but type in like fairies, <clears throat> like real fairies. Um. I mean, I'll type it in. I'm not seeing any... Talking about, like, Tinkerbell type stuff. Yeah, like, straight up. There's supposedly 8.7 million different species of things that we don't know about on Earth. And not identified, so it could definitely be possible. My fairies yeah. found... You said there's 8 million? 8.7 million different species of uh, living things that we have not identified. But the thing is, like, when when you get to, like, humans and, like, elephants or whatever, is that if you try to scale them up, they don't necessarily scale or, or go down. So that's why I'm like, okay, so how small can a humanoid no. be? Maya, type it in. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm looking right now. Here. I'm looking at my screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, so, these are tiny... Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Life. So this is from a collector. This is from 2016. Macabre collection. 
fairies seen with their flesh rotted away and their wings nailed on the display boards are joined by sinister looking contorted alien bodies so this is like some sick person that's out here collecting um abortions let's go back oh it could be abortions yeah let's go back you know what i'm saying you know that's some nurse digging in the trash behind the uh plant period let's go to like yeah no no like so like there there is like a real Like there's like real stories of real little bitty fairies. So said that you weren't always cute and used to drink human blood. Maybe mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. They're thinking. My CP gotta be hype because I don't think the way he is thinking about it that it's real. CP's probably been hype when he thought about that. Like they used to right, be but no, 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 inflated. but but they have some that that's how little they're talking about though. Like a like a big ass mosquito, you know what I'm saying? And but you know, and just like that's it's literally that small in areas that. And he is dead serious about this. Wow. People just don't, you know what I'm saying? See, I buy this when you're talking about like archetypes or ideas or like thought forms that then become real. Okay. I'm just, I don't like ruling stuff out. It's just like, dog, like, you know, we can fathom it, which means that it existing is almost, it's, all, it's, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't fathom certain things. I can't fathom a big ass humanoid whale. But you just did right now. But, but it's not, I mean, I, yeah, I guess I did, but walking around, we could, we could not miss that on this planet. A, a big humanoid whale walking around, right? We could miss these on this planet so easy. You know what? So easy. So, humanoid um, insects, because that could that could get conflated if somebody saw if somebody saw a humanoid insect. So this guy, university lecturer, claims to have photographed real life tiny Tinkerbells flying through the air. In the British countryside. Yeah, this is the one I've seen before. Yep. Little like that. John Hyatt, 53, says his series of photos, which were taken over the past two years, prove that tiny wings creatures do exist in the Roslyn, Rosendale Valley, Lancashire. What? I mean, the pictures are here. You know what I'm saying? Little stuff like this. That's like... Of course, somebody would miss all oh, these mosquitoes is everywhere. Pop, slapping their ass. You didn't kill some real little people. I mean, like, I could be on mosquitoes. I mean, it's ambiguous. Yeah. It is ambiguous. Oh, man. I wish he had caught one. But no, I, I'm glad he didn't. Never mind. I shouldn't have said that. That was wrong. But if he had, then we could see what it was. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Like, if it was something like this. But they just show you what mosquitoes look like to show you that that's just, they just don't have that form. So this is South London. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it would be in this area in like the British Isles. I understand where they are coming from, but why would um, those little fairy creatures only be in the British area? Wouldn't they be all over the the country and world? Wouldn't everyone would have a version of that, like the real human? So I call Kiaf on this. Kiaf. Is this a, around the whole world they're finding these? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just in these, you know, is America is so loud and just, you, we would not know a hive of these if they was, you know what I'm saying? We, we just wouldn't know. We wouldn't even be thinking to look for this. We've been told that everything is fake. Hmm. There are people on drugs in uh, in Cali, though. Like Burning Man people. Burning Man people are all about this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, burn them up. And, you know, they'd be making all them, uh, you know. Yeah, I would, I would definitely like to look into this more and see what... Um... So this one turned out to be a fake. 
but the this I mean doesn't look like a hornet. I don't know. It would have been it would have Okay. Been I will I will resist the urge to go to the comments. Okay. So this is a the zoom in a little better because although he caught a picture, it isn't as clear as a a good HD, you know? But um I don't know. I don't know what the thought process was when he thought about this. Other thing that I wanted to talk about, um, which you were talking about how complicated things get, the more likely we are to kill ourselves. Mm -hmm. So this story, I don't know if you saw it going around. Joe Rogan had shared it and then somebody else had picked up on it. But, you know, Isaac Newton, um, Isaac Newton spends a lot of his time on the occult. Isaac Newton, who discovered gravity and who discovered calculus, he spent a lot of his time studying about the occult. What is the occult? Can you explain the occult so people don't understand? So that would be what we would consider like magic, alchemy. And back in the day, a lot of those things were fused together because they were just like, we don't know. So it could be science or it could be alchemy. And they thought it was like the same thing. Or religion. And they were looking at the Bible as if it was a real thing that had actually happened. So occult practices would be like rituals, spells, right. angel workings, any kind, anything like that. That's occult. Okay. So that was um, forbidden in Christianity. But that's what alchemy comes from. Anyway, so Isaac Newton spent a lot of his time studying, I'll say Christianity, because he was a really, really a hardcore Christian. So I don't want to say that he is an occultist, but he was a hardcore Christian. He said that he's adding up all these things from the Bible. He predicts the world will end uh, 2060, between 2060 and 2344. I call it careful with that because no man on this earth other than God himself knows when the earth is going to come to an end. There are so many historic moments where humans actually declare that the earth w is going to end at a certain date, and it never did, so I called Kiafa on this. He says, probably won't end before that. Jesus Christ, that's a big-ass window. That's like, man, that's like, that, that, that's, that's some old prices, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, come on, that's a big-ass window, though. That, that's like 300 years. Yeah. But he's, he's talking about the biblical apocalypse. So he thinks that Jesus is going to come back and have a civilization that's going to Where go is Jesus supposed to come back to? Because it's like, people think he's coming back to Wisconsin. He's coming back to Arkansas. He's not like, he's probably coming back to where he's from. He's going to go back to Jerusalem, right? I thought that's why they had to put the temple there. Oh, they put a the temple there for him to come back to? No, but doesn't the story say that when um, the Jews have, the Jews have, Israel again, and there's a temple. The temple is rebuilt. He's going to come back. There's a few different theories. Not theory. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, don't yeah, tell I me never heard comments. that before. I was always thought he's coming back to Detroit, and that's what's crazy. <laughs> they thought it's like he's coming here, and we'd be like, "What the fuck? He coming here? We, we better clean up." <laughs> he's coming here. You know how they tell you at church? He's gonna be right here in this little ass church we had, right in here. We actually had a big church too. I feel like. I went to Word of Faith in, in Michigan. I feel like Jesus would have come in that bitch. So, okay. Okay. Nice as hell. I don't know if he'd say it's nice as hell. I don't know if he, I don't know if he'd say okay or this bitch, but you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm paraphrasing. I, I, would, I would never want to say what Jesus would say. I, I would let him speak his own. You know what I'm saying? You know, because he might come in and just be cool about it. Like, y'all be like, you like to see? So he'd be like, he just that's you know that's I don't want him to be all like friendly with everybody. I want him to know exactly who he want to be cool with. Know exactly who's talking shit. Come down here like chill out. Don't uh, -uh please don't touch me. Oh but no, please. And, and, and you got a chain on the, the a, a chain of my death. That's like getting dunked on, and then everybody make a chain and you getting dunked on. <laughs> you know, oh, so yeah. like Jesus peace. Yeah, like you, <laughs> nigga. I was I was I was seventeen. I, I look great. You can't get a chain of that. Y'all get a chain of me up there looking fucked up. Like, come on, man. Imagine you, you get the flu. That's his highlight reel. Right. That's you crazy. in the flu, and then, you know, you in the bed, and, they, they, and everybody got a chain, and you just like... <laughs> it's like, dog, come on, man. I don't want that chain of me. 
Jesus be mad. That's why I never got no Jesus peace. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, bro. I ain't gonna have you. I ain't gonna have you out here on the cross or with that damn thorny ass hat on that you probably used to hate to wear. Like, man, we. we uh, ah! Y'all ready? <laughs> oh, right, that was a torture, right? Yeah, but they, but they, they always have him wearing it like in the pictures, like you know, saying like he was like. It's because it's like, yeah, that was not his best kind of thing. Yeah, that was not his best days. Jesus probably had PTSD. He see all these goddamn chains. He was like, oh, oh my God. He, he literally would go back. He'd be like, oh, that's what y'all on? Yeah, okay. y'all on that? Cool. Remember when I healed that motherfucker? Y'all don't want to put that on the chain. All right, cool. Say say less. Water the wine. None of that on the chain. All right, bet. Bet. I had some. His real. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like Jesus had like a little huddle for real. He's trying to get recruited. He's got all the, all the terrible things he did. Water wine, water wine, supper. You know what I'm saying? Fish, 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 fish. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, he's walking on water. Like, oh, he's good. He's so good. And somebody, somebody said the better shot. See, now this guy right here, real good savior. Watch this. Ooh, look at that right there. On the water, on the water, walking, juking. He juking. Okay, so Isaac says the world may end 2060 to 2023. Uh, okay, but look at, the, look at the title. In 1704, Isaac Newton predicts the world will end in 2060. That's not what he said. He said between 2060 and 23 something. 2344. Yeah, because they're trying to conflate it with this thing here. This is the MIT program. Predicts in 1973 that the civilization will end by 2040. How will we end? Look at them old ass computers. You think they was right? <laughs> Look at that. Is, is that a file cabinet? Remember file cabinets? Remember that, a whole hard drive is that now. <laughs> and I didn't file cabinets. Look at her. Look at evil as hell. That, that's an evil ponytail. Uh, this this guy called Forrester, this guy called Jay Forrester, he did um, invented this field called system dynamics. So this is how they're predicting. They're basically modeling that we will end by 2040, which I don't entirely buy. Ain't no computer without no speakers telling me when my shit is going to end. Remember back in the day, everybody had them compact computers. Remember the compact? You had, even them had the speakers. You turn the little speakers. They were trash little speakers. They, yeah, they, they, they used to crackle. They're all external speakers. Yeah. But it's like, come on, fam. No speakers. And you just got a lab coat on. They thought she was so smart. That was like, an, she's probably making bank. $40 a month. Talk about when the world go in. Your world already ended. Rent due, motherfucker. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I got 40. So, yeah, they use they use modeling. And we use modeling now, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. What are they? I mean, it's like, dog, oh, they're not taking into account. I need to go back and look at their model. And if some of the stuff, like if it's like Popeye's on there and stuff that they knew was going to get built. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Subway's Popeye's is a corner store. Then that corner store turned into a Taco Bell KFC combination restaurant. Then the Popeye's closed down because the KFC restaurant, they can't compete with tacos and chicken. So then that goes away. And if they show us that, then I'll be like, okay, yeah, they own, they own some shit for real. But they don't know. They use, there's this thing called the Club of Rome. And they were, they're against, they're an organization which may or may not be Illuminati adjacent that, is basically against business just spreading everywhere and taking things over. So they say that the collapse, let's see if I can click on this. I can't click on that. The collapse would happen for uh, these various reasons. Collapse due to natural resource depletion, collapse due to pollution, all right. Rising costs for technology and eventually cause declines, but no collapse. See, we haven't seen rising costs for technology. We've seen falling costs for technology. At the moment. At the moment, what we've seen for a while. Population stabilizes in the 21st century as this human welfare on a high level. We the last two, eh, the first two, mm, more plausible. So they say for these reasons we might get collapse. And, but there's different things they don't take into account, like maybe an individual comes in and has an idea. They, don't, they can't account for an Obama or whatever president you think is good. Well, they right, it also kind of... And yeah. then also the trend is based on whenever... The something like that or even project something like that because they did it in the past my own person talk about the times that they did predict the world was going to end and they were incorrect talk about that 
study was done and then it kind of goes from there so like based on how things are right now trending how they will be but it's like things got so much better so fast like they're talking about technology like i said there was no speakers on that computer they technology for them was so much you know what i'm saying like other stuff that you know was supposed to take us out you know there was not even no atms back then it was just like a person in the hole like give me your card <laughs> <laughs> what you need a 40 you know but I think um, predicting the end of the world is just, we don't even, we we can't even predict the beginning of the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we don't even understand really what the beginning of the world is. So trying to predict the end is laughable. I think that we don't, we don't, we don't understand what the real bang, the, you know, the big bang was. We don't understand how really vast our um, universe or multiverse is. You know, we don't really understand what the life. No, that Big Bang Theory, I cannot even agree with that because that idea of thinking is so, I don't know. How could you come up with the idea like there was an explosion and out of nowhere there comes these planets and all these planets, there are one particular planet that has life forms like us with animals, with water, with all these natural resources for us to live by, you cannot account for that. Why isn't it all throughout the galaxy, you know? Why is it just us? It goes beyond our thinking. And I personally believe that God created us. I know that may sound crazy to you guys, but that's the only plausible explanation that I can say. There isn't anything about any Big Bang Theory, in my opinion, that makes that logic accurate. Because we are human beings. Somebody had to create us, if you think about it. You know? A cycle of planets is, you know what I'm saying? Like, because we're in it. Like, even these scientists are a part of the thing that's going to get wiped out anyway. Yeah. Like, you cannot... You will not be saved if this planet decides to die. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you acting like you're predicting it. You're like you're just a person that's gonna die. So we we can't even call you wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um Yeah, and they couldn't have predicted like a, a natural disaster, like the volcanoes. If volcanoes go off, it doesn't matter how good the world is, we're we're screwed. Right. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, exactly. You know, and so you know, volcano just just a big ass earth pimple with all kind of you know what I'm saying hot ass pus in it. You know, and you know everybody's go through a little acne. You know what I'm saying, and that's all it is. So, okay, this I don't believe. Um, you know, these people weren't as smart as some of the people I know now. So I wouldn't even I wouldn't even you know. Yeah. But that's interesting though. It's very interesting because, you know, this is what they choose to study. Meanwhile. Um, people still got big ears and they haven't figured out how to fix that or people still can't grow beards and they still running around, you know, bullshitting us on about what the fuck that means. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just like, all right, thanks thank, thanks for telling us what's going to happen in 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, appreciate you guys. You know, real shit's going on. But if the world ends in 18 years, I'm about to give me a fat ass mortgage and be like, <laughs> the joke's on you guys. <laughs> the joke is on you guys. I don't. I don't think the world's gonna end in uh, twenty years. I'm not doom and gloom. I am not doom and gloom. Mm, 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 mm. So, do you want to play a game? Do you think we have time? Yes, we definitely have time. Okay, so grab uh, headphones. Isaac Newton. Which Isaac? That that ain't uh, that ain't the Isaac from South Park, is it? That that ain't <laughs> Isaac Newton. <laughs> no. It's a different Isaac. That's Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Same thing deeper voice okay so i'm gonna play a sound where should i plug into uh, uh just the headphone jacks okay okay whoa let's not get sarcastic oh <laughs> it's like nah all right what, what should i do all right okay, so we we have to do for, through headphones because amir said there's going to be a feedback so i'm going to play a sound and you try to guess that sound Mm-hmm. oh also too while, while we're waiting on this sound to play um we're starting a discord because what happens is you guys are sharing a lot of um, information in the comments 
that you want me to talk about. But it's just hard to get to everything. But in the Discord, we, we can really start these discussions, share links, and then that could help me and Maya to be able to, you know, kind of cater the conversation. So that is coming. And I'll explain to you guys how to join the Discord. Um, and I know Hippie's helping me with that. So go ahead. Nice. what this is what is it wait so have you had the new um i would say i could be a a vehicle like a truck that is revving up but it is distorted in some way form or fashion but i could be wrong though Mexican pizza that they just brought back. <laughs> and so like, you know, like 30 minutes after you eat it, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is, yeah. And, 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 and if you go to the restaurant and just listen to the bathroom door. That's what, this is the sound? Yeah, yeah. Just in there suffering. Because yeah. it's just cheese and sour cream and the beef and the beans. It's, it's, it, it's a lot. So now what is this, aliens? This is the sound at the center of the black hole in the Perseus galaxy. What? Yeah, so that's the NASA was able to record the sound from a black hole, and that's what it is. Do you want to hear again? Wow. Yeah, it, that just made me nauseous. Because you were talking about, we don't know where the, the origin of the universe or the world. guys think that is now that Maya said that that give that gives a whole new perspective on what what it is that is out there that we don't know that we do not know because let's be honest there's a lot of things that we do not know about this world and galaxy that is so much things out there that we haven't even uncovered us yet, so man, that is crazy. That is wild, in my opinion. That is crazy. <sighs> a pit. It's a pit. I mean, is it just like you know, like that's that's a hell of a fucking room tone. You know what I'm saying? Like that's really what that is. So basically, um, so they have vessels that that they can send out that far, but they just can't get them back in our lifetime. Is that what that is? They're getting they they're, they're right um, and so what charges it and then what allows it to send signal back like it says eventually, I mean, it's, eventually it would die out the amir would probably know these data sonifications translate information collected by various nasa missions such as this chandra x-ray observatory hubble t Space Telescope and the Spitzer Space Telescope into sound. So they're so they're getting data and they are then translating it into sound. Can I say something that I I think is the elephant in the room here? We're not looking for a more advanced society than us. I think that that would be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. We're looking for a less advanced society than us because I think that the advancements are what poisoned our planet. We we want to go to a society that is a little bit less advanced than us so that we could rewrite all of our mistakes and do it the right way. That's terrible. Why would we do that? Are you fucking, what are you That's talking about? That's awful. That's an awful thing to do. First off, it's against the prime directive, which uh, is we don't interfere, which is not real, but it's what? in Star Trek. Are you? <laughs> Maya, we're Trek. trying to the survive. Pr prime directive in Star Trek is you do not interfere. Oh my you God. can't manipulate others. Well, but we're going to. We're definitely going to, and it's not even about, imagine finding a planet at dinosaur stage. But that's their planet. That's not our planet. Let me, but then it becomes ours. That's, yeah. 
if anything, do you understand what I'm saying? The freshest water, the freshest oxygen, nothing has been. And then we do it all the right way based on what we know now, which is what I feel like what was done here until we use it up. And then it's time to go. These planets are they might be disposable with our. That's awful. No, but people think about it with that mindset. Like, no, Maya, that's not our planet to use like that. Maya, name a name a name a name a habitat that anything living has not outgrown. Well, sometimes the habitat will correct and kill the being. Well, yeah, it's, yeah it, it will purge itself I mean, of. Yeah. Nobody can hear me, so maybe translate it. But uh, if we figure out we can live on Mars, that makes this planet expendable. Well, there. Okay, so this is just. What I saw in a video recently that the cost to terraform Mars is like a few trillion and it's like a few hundred years. Now, Earth wouldn't then be expendable because just like Asia isn't expendable when we discovered the Americas. We do it with that mindset, though. Now we don't, need, we don't need to save Earth in the sense we don't have to do all these climate change. The, uh, if we, don't have to, we don't have to save the planet in that sense. The, the problem yeah. is, though, is trying to guess the age of a planet is like trying to guess the age of oxygen or the age of particles or the age. And so theoretically Mars could be the planet of yesterday that has already died and is a dead planet. And it's showing you a dead planet. In my personal opinion, all right, there are eight to nine planets. If you decide to count Pluto as a planet, right? I believe personally, the structures and the atoms and stuff that we have here on Earth are only for us to survive. If we decide to go to any other planet, we will all die because we are not designed to live on that planet. Do you understand? So I don't think going to Mars is a good idea. If we, if we were designed to go on Mars, wouldn't you think there would have been human life on Mars already? Think about it now. Think about it. Come on, guys. Like, that theory that needs to be thrown out the window because we will not survive. And look at it like this, right? The Earth is designed to be close enough to the sun, but not too close to where we will all burn or not too far away where we could freeze to death. Imagine going to a planet that is further away from Earth. We will die. We will all f freeze to death because it would be too cold for any human being or any life forms to live because the sun radiation, it wouldn't be sufficient for the whole world to stay warm, you know? Think about it. Come on. It's looked like. Um, I think that we would have to find an, a planet that's circling another sun that's exactly the amount of distance away that has the, everything that we need. But like I said, we just need that planet to be... Um, like, we need these people of this planet to be not as far along as we are. And I think that's the bottom line. We're looking for these these beings that are supposed to give us all this technology and all of that. But what if we find a baby planet and we are the technology? Like we are the aliens with the flying shit and the the metal and the technology. Because think about what we could give another planet if we landed there. And I think that the that spectrum of big brother big brother big brother big brother goes all the way that way but if we try to go that way we could find something you understand what i'm saying like no and i i you're technically right like we should technically be looking for another planet morally however it's wrong you would like to them take... to be more advanced than we are so that it could be a fair fight no I, we shouldn't take other people's planets right but what i'm saying is like who that's the i think that's the whole thing is that we go into the swamp and we kill the alligators because them getting over 14 feet makes them a threat to eat humans, right? And so then it becomes open season on the alligators, right? Because this planet does not belong to the alligators, right? Um, the, this planet does not belong to the turtles. This planet is, is just, this planet is, is, an, is a, a habitat. 
and everybody is it's a free for all everybody can get the hands you know what i'm saying so if you look at another planet like that then it's like i mean it's kind of like if you can get there then it's a part of your territory and then if it's a part of your territory then there is some stake to it like nothing really belongs to anybody for real what no okay i gotta push back on that because just because we can take something especially if we found if we found a planet and the inhabitants were like the homo erectus like we were showing like us uh, homo florensiensis these little you know one meter three feet little things and we could easily go in there and just like take their things we should seriously consider whether or not we are going to do that. Because once we do that to them, there's nothing morally stopping a more advanced civilization from coming and saying, well, this is your rules. That's, we've already done that in practice, though. When well, that was messed up. That was totally messed up. Definitely messed up, but... Well, there is no but. It's definitely messed up. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, right? But... We're not the ones that have to be tasked with developing a society we get a chance to just live in society we've never had to make the tough decisions about what we're going to do to survive we have been blessed to be able to just survive like we have never had to kill our meals for real like we don't have to have the consciousness of um fighting for our territory like others do so i mean it's like it's on one hand to say that it's barbaric and all of that it's like that's not the case i think that we don't have to go like we can go there and be like, look, listen, we can trade you this technology, but we, we need a place to stay. And we can also show you how to keep this shit clean, which is what I feel like is crazy is that. Am I not mistaken? The aliens that have came back and talked to those African kids or talked to people, all they say is you guys are fucking up this planet. Mm -hmm. That sounds like they're speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. That sounds like they know what happens when you fuck up planets. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you know, they might be here and they might be fine with being up in the snow and in the mountains and places that we never even see. Yeah. That we don't even use. Right? And it's like, you you look for a society or a planet that is less evolved than you because that's going to be a planet that we're looking for somewhere to live, not some place to go and borrow Nintendos and shit. Like we're looking for somewhere to really set it up and to have that sustain us for a long period of time without destroying that again. Yeah. If we can start over, will we do gas cars on a new planet or will we go straight with electric cars? You understand what I'm saying? Like we could show them. We did it wrong this way. We did it wrong this way. We're not going to do that. What's going to happen is we're going to push them out like we did with the Neanderthals, like we did with the Denisovans, like the white people did with the Native Americans. We're just going to push them out and take their land. Whether or not we come there with these you know, lofty goals of helping, what we're going to do is just take their stuff. Do you think that the whole um, Big Bang Theory about the meteor hitting Earth and killing all the dinosaurs is a little bit cap, but do you think that we came down here and wiped them out because it, it was in our best interest as humans to have this planet? Because, I mean, look at what it is and what it does and everything that we have here. And it's just a bunch of big, dead-ass dinosaurs everywhere. And it's like there hasn't been a Big Bang since. There has not been a meteor that wiped us out since. Nothing has happened like that since, but billions and billions and billions of years ago, just by chance, we're just undefeated, dodging every meteor since. Well, we got hit. there was one that came down in Siberia a few years ago that if that had come down in a major city would have wiped it out because we're actually pretty small. And when you see they'll they'll say that there's one coming by, one coming by, one coming by. So the chances of it's like throwing two pieces of sand in the air and seeing if they're going to hit together. So I totally buy that. That was a one in a hundred million years thing. It could happen again. It could happen again. But wipe out the whole species of a animal but then leave a planet where only mammals can survive in in the superior form like don't forget that the dinosaurs didn't die out they, they just became smaller they became lizards and birds and et cetera, et cetera. but we somehow became humans humans and you know what i'm saying it's just it's just you know it's just very like uh hmm I don't know. Sound like we stole this bitch and nobody told us. 
And we just own this motherfucker like, oh, the dinosaurs, they must have been wiped out by this. It's like, really? You know what I'm saying? Really? I think we got lucky. We got lucky with the, the meteor. And, I, and I'm not saying anything about the dinosaurs. But I Adam and Eve, like, you hear lucky. that? Adam and Eve, butt ass naked. Like, I heard something. I heard a meteor. Hmm. Anyway, back to fucking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. Like, I just it's, just, it's just very, very convenient that things have been set up for us so good to thrive here. And the dinosaurs convenient. were in the fucking way. Well, they were in the way a long time before. Now, I don't know we don't have time for it now, but the first, like, 10,000 years of farming was not better than hunter-gatherers. So, like, when we discovered farming as a species, um, life didn't get better. And our, the lives of farmers didn't improve under over hunter-gatherers for, like, 10,000 years. Well, as, as, as the theory would like us to believe that the planet was completely inhabitable to anything alive. There was no sun to grow anything there was no yeah. so like farming could should have been shitty and no. everyone should have suffered oh i mean not after the dinosaurs but i mean like when humans invented farming like so that happened like 12 50 that wasn't there to make it good so it was still for a long time probably worse than hunter gatherers yeah so the people who were going out and killing their food and finding their food they were still eating better than the people who were farming so it it was like developing that technology for ten thousand years before we got to a point where life was good at for anybody i'm not gonna say the movie because i say it every podcast so i'm not even gonna mention it but is it the eternals oh man let me, let but me. you saw how he was talking about giving them that plow he literally changed i think this would be the third or fourth episode of cps podcast and every episode he mentioned the eternals oh my goodness cp oh my goodness Change farming for them because that was what they needed at the time, but he wanted to give them the engine and all that. Like if you look at that movie, it is basic. I know people are so sick of me saying it, and I'm <laughs> sick of saying it, but it's like they came out with a movie that basically filled in the holes of religion and science and what what you know. And it's just like this probably has the most questions that we've ever wanted answered in a hypothetical, hypothetical, philosophical way. So, I mean, yeah, I do think that if we were to come to another planet and tell them, like, you guys are hurting it, this is what it would look like. And it wouldn't be us hurting them. We, we would be superior to them. They would, they, would, they, would, they would worship us. They would protect us. They would want us hidden from the rest of their society so that we wouldn't make all of them feel inferior. We would allow them to keep their power points that they have in society while, meanwhile, acknowledging that we are superior that they would put us up into a neighborhood or a, an environment where we could thrive and we would be away from them so that we, we wouldn't disturb their i guarantee you that's how it would happen until, that's until terrible we, 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 we would eventually send for more and more of us and they would continue to be like i saw something but they wouldn't know why i'm saying like why 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 would it not work though why would that not work here because we would just keep having more and more babies and then we would push them out and then we would take over their planet, and that would be a repeat of what happened when the Europeans came to the Americas, which is wrong. We all aren't Europeans, you know? They came carrying all these diseases, and... You sound like one of those people who's scared for people to move to their neighborhood. Like, oh my God, they're going to come in here with their basketball hoops. And they're going to be putting them up in their driveways. And then what happened when the ball rolls out in the street? And then I'm driving the station wagon down the street. And then I swerve for the ball. And then I hit the neighbor's tree. And then I kill our kids, Dan. They can't live in our neighborhoods. Can't you see? It's the it's a snowball effect. I'm telling you. I'm They're telling sitting you. outside their barbecue. And we smell the barbecue. We think, oh, it's just a barbecue. But really, our kitchen's on fire. But Now we're different. dead. Because... We're used to barbecue, but it's really us, and we're the barbecue, Dan. That's now different. what? No, it's just that it's just we're so conditioned to only think about the negative aspects of what could be, but it's like, no, we got to survive too, and that's a way. But I'm not saying it would be great for us if we found this planet, but I'm saying for the people that are on it, see, the neighbor, the people who move into the neighborhood are supposed to be black people, but it would right. be different. It would be like if Jeff Bezos moved into your neighborhood and started looking at your house like, you know what? I wish I could put my garage where your house is and then just wipe them away. Yeah, but guess I think if he, if he 
you were to move somewhere close to your neighborhood, he would all honestly like trade song, buy the neighbor's house if they complain, you understand? He have the he have the money to do that. He could buy your house. He could give you amazingly two million. That's like two dollars to him, you know, understand? And I would take it. And I would live somewhere else. That's what you gonna have to pay me, and you a rich motherfucker anyway. So guess what, Ben? Now I go somewhere and build me a big ass house off you, cause you you wanted to make you a garage. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm telling the story, man. You know Jeff Bezos bought my house for three times the value, cause he can make him a garage. Meanwhile, I'm over here living, dumbass nigga. You know I still got Amazon. You know what I'm saying? It's like we could help them, Maya. Like, dog. Oh, like, imagine a planet where only electric cars existed, and then imagine a planet where. We started off vegan and we started off, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like we we took only the best things that we know and took our best aspects of our society to them, help them to achieve a higher rate of intelligence for whatever reason, you know, or whatever, you know, and I, I just think it'd be dope. Or it might be like, you know, their water might taste like shit and they'd be like, that, that's the best thing ever. They're like, what the fuck is nasty ass water? Get us away from here. And the soap don't sud up and the toilets don't flush the right way. They flush the other way. You know what I'm saying? And you can't plug shit up. So everybody's phone is dying because the plugs is different. Yeah, get me off this planet. Okay. So we're going to have to let the audience decide because I think we have to agree or disagree. I think the best thing we could do for another planet is to leave them alone. And CP thinks that we can. I somewhat agree. Agree to disagree. I agree to some extent and disagree to some extent. So I'm neutral. And help them because humans are so nice and right. are always helping other humans, especially new ones they find. <laughs> but you know what? It's the first time for anything. Are you done? Because can I tell you something? <laughs> yes. Can I tell you something? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that's that's what it's like when you just want to move to a nice neighborhood. You don't want to hurt nobody. You just want to move to a nice neighborhood so that your kids can breathe and have water and go to a regular school and hear these little motherfuckers, you know, gather around, you know, with their 18 fingers and they pointing all at you and it's like, we don't want you here. It's like, first of all, I beat everybody ass in this neighborhood. All we want to do is chill. Um, I think we can all, you know, it's like, dog, once again, we belong to this universe and to these planets. They don't belong to us. And that's why if you can get to another one, you can get to it. I think that, you know, this ownership of land that's, that was here before you and your family and all the money that y'all possibly have is crazy. Right? You buy land, that's, I mean, I'm talking about like, okay, let me rephrase that. Because if you buy land, it's yours. But I'm talking about like, the idea that like I can't go to a country because my government got beef with their government and it's like, well, I just want to see the country. I'm never, it's parts of the world that I'll never see because I'm an American. I'm never going to get to see these parts of the world because I'm an American. That's crazy. Meanwhile, I'm... That's true because of the ongoing war that we are having among ourselves. That is true. We, we should be free. Anything on this earth belongs to us. But you know, as government, government wants power and with power it breeds you know negativity and destruction so if you have that divide you can control the masses to a certain extent that's why i i understand where cp is coming from with that earthling yeah right that's that's insane i just know when I'm not thinking of history when a powerful race comes in and tries to help they end up taking it over well I, I think i think we should we should maybe challenge them to a basketball tournament right in space right have a dj around playing the jams call it something like space jam LeBron. just off the top of my head and then we play them one-on-one -on -one for their planet and um, we beat their ass. All right. We know pick and rolls. We know, so, you know what I'm saying? There's certain things we know. They just playing with straight up man-to-man -man defense. You know what I'm saying? We zoning them hoes. They have no three-point ball at all. Um, I'm just very confident in our chances at, 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 in a planetary Space Jam tournament when where we play for um, their planet. Anyway, guys, my name is Comedian CP. Uh, this is Maya. <laughs>
We have Amir, um, and we have Cam in the building. You can't hear Cam, but he was here. Um, and, uh, yeah, this has been another episode of the CP Podcast. Let us know. I'm going to be letting you guys know how to join that Discord very, very soon because I need – I need these conversations to kind of never end. You know what I'm saying? And I also, as we find new facts, I need them bitches too because, you know, we don't have all the answers. This is this podcast is about really just asking questions that invoke the thoughts that are going to maybe perhaps lead us to some answers. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact um, scientists are listening to this podcast. Like I've been hit up by like four or five scientists like, yo, we are doing research about everything that you're talking about. Oh, yeah? No, it's not true. Yeah. It's not true. <laughs> he just said. <laughs> it's not true it's not true wow. but I'm sure somewhere in some form or fashion you know it's kind of scientists like studying all my shit anyway CP we're out of here wow I really enjoyed this podcast I enjoyed the interaction and everything there's a lot of things that we do not know do not we cannot fathom going to another planet because it's just that this planet, like it was made perfectly for us. We have oxygen, we have running water, we have fishes. We cannot um, supply these natural resources that we have here and put it on in another planet like Mars. We cannot do that. And Mars is further away from the sun. We would all die if we decide to do that. But, um,. Like I said, this is a wonderful, wonderful podcast. I always look forward to put out new videos like this and watch it with you guys. I hope that you guys are watching it with me. I will be posting the new episode of Roast Me when it uploads Wednesday. This upcoming Wednesday. That will be coming soon. And... We will see if that will top the episode 5, which was the best so far. But until we meet again, this is Steph Reacts. Peace. I'm out of here, guys.